The image of self of self perfection, how it destroys the discipline in Christ. And who knows what self perfection is? The last two days I've been struggling for the correct word. And there's a whole bunch of these words that came through piece by piece by piece. And the best one that came about was self-perfection. So I'm going to use it in the adjective form, which is as good as I can get. I can't be any better. I'm perfect. But now we as people, or flesh, the human flesh... We tend to forget. <coughs> we forget where we've been in life. We forget what we've been through in life. The things that we've seen. And for lots of us, the things that we have done. We tend to forget this. Which then puts this, like I say, this false sense of perfection that we are perfect <coughs> because we've forgotten everything. We lose our humbleness, that humbleness that God gave us when we started our journey with Him. We fall away from it. So tonight we need to understand. We are not where we come from, but where we have been. Does anybody know what I mean about that? Because you know what? When we were born, when we were small, when we were a child, we were good. But the choices that we made in our lives led us astray. So it's not where we come from, because we all come from being good. But that process of where we've been, Jesus takes it and he molds us like the potter. And every single thing that we've done and every single thing that we've been through, every single part of our lives, he has molded to us to a point. Who doesn't know the story of the potter? But everybody knows what a potter is, correct? And sometimes when we get a bit of a flaw, Jesus Christ has to take us and crumble us and start again. It's a part of the process, it's a part of life, and it's a part of where He wants us to be. Once again I say, as part of the flesh, and as part of the process, we forget about where we've come from and what we've done and what Jesus has done. And we start giving this perception of perfection. Amen. That image. We, our minds, they sit and they work on us. You know that whole me, 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 I, 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 that attitude in life. Nobody can tell me nothing, it should be me. We become blinded because of the thoughts and that, that run through our minds. And we step away from Christ's plan for us. And because of this, Blindness in our lives. We start becoming judgmental. Number one. Arrogant, conniving, manipulative and vindictive. Who knows what it means? Okay. Judgmental. Having an overly critical point of view. I know better. Arrogant. You know, the big head. And over a big head of myself, 
of my importance in life. Manipulative. I put you a dodgy influence. It's where we try to influence the situations to go our way in life. We do things under the counter. Vindictive, where we have a strong desire for revenge or we hold a grudge and we let that manifest through our lives. So now, because of these five terms in our lives that produce this fake image, where we are perfect and we forget about everything else, the look at me, we tend to forget that the only person, the only being is Jesus Christ that is perfect. The devil comes to steal and destroy and take our thoughts. And he takes our thoughts away from Jesus Christ that we think it should be us. We are the perfect ones, but we're not. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, 3 to 5. Why do you look at the speck of dust in your brother's eyes and pay no attention to the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when you have a log in your own eye? How about, or you hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye. That way you can see clearly to take a speck out of your brother's. Harsh words, but it's pure truth. Now, this isn't a blanketed statement. It's a call. It's a call for our attention that we should be discerning rather than negative in life. Hallelujah. That we should build instead of breaking a person down. That we should exercise church discipline and trust God to be the final judge in all things. You know, I come from a construction background. And sometimes you are too close to the project. And the project I'm talking about is us. Because what I mean by this is when somebody comes from the outside, they can see clearly because they haven't noticed before, but we're so used to seeing this. Like if you stick your finger right between your eyes, you don't see much, do you? But when you hold it somewhere else, you see it. We're too close to the projects of our life. We used to the things that we do, that we don't see them anymore. We don't see that plank in our lives. <laughs> And it comes to a point in our lives when Jesus Christ works and he speaks to us that we can actually step back and we can understand that we also have faults. Amen. We can see our own faults Hallelujah. more than what we can see others. Hallelujah. And when we get to that point in our lives, the growth starts. But, there's always a but. With this growth comes correction. So if you cannot be, cor be corrected, no matter where it comes from, you will not grow in life. Amen. It goes back to the attitude of me, 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 I, I, I. Nobody can tell me anything because it should be me. I should be there. And because of this attitude, you never grow. Can you see how this perception of ourselves takes the discipline out of our life? Because first of all, we know better. 
We're not going to listen to anybody. We complain about what we've been told because it should be us. I should be there. Nobody can tell me nothing. Which brings me to Romans 13. It's one of my favorites. Because I promise you it used to be me. And Jesus beat me with this verse. Because when I started, it used to be me. And it says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except for what God has established. The authorities that exist have established or have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right. But for those that do wrong, do you want to be free from fear of authority? Then do what is right and you will be commended. For, one, for the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. Amen. It's for our own conscience that we should do right. So how often in our lives do we criticize and say, I know. When somebody speaks to us or says, this is how you do something, you say, I know. I know I used to do it. I know people still do it and people will always do it. How often do we think, should be me when somebody gives an instruction it should be me I should be there I know better why is this person there and not me it's because we don't want to submit that image of ourselves is taking us away from the discipline of Christ Because as soon as you say to your authority that Christ has put there, it should be me. You're basically saying to Christ, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're doing. It should be me. Where we are in our lives right at this exact point is exactly where we are meant to be. And no matter what we do, no matter what we say, God has got us exactly where we all need to be. Amen. And no matter how weak we feel, Jesus is going to do his best to work in us. Amen. But we need to be disciplined. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes to steal and destroy, but I have come to give life and life in abundance. So what are you waiting for in life? Or what are you waiting for? Life or death? Christ or the devil? God or the world? I choose life. I choose Christ. And I pray that everybody else does. I want to go to Luke 9, 23 to 25. And it says, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple 
must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. I didn't say it, Jesus said it. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever they loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit their very selves? Can we see how when we get to this point in our lives, me, 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 I, 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 and we think we are perfect, takes us away from Christ. Instead of us picking up our cross and fighting the battle every single day, we start losing ourselves because we forfeit in Christ. <clears throat> so basically, we need to deny our selfish nature, our selfish desire to use our time our way, and to choose our own di direction in life with no regards for Christ. Are you willing to pay the price that Christ paid? The price that Jesus Christ paid for you. Is it so bad that God demands from us? He wants love. He wants our attention. He wants our affection. He wants us to be his children. It's nowhere near the price that he paid for our loves. You know, we should value God and all that he stands for no matter what the price is in our lives. <clears throat> if this present life is important to you, wouldn't you do anything to protect it? Every single thing in your power to protect your health, your safety, everything like that. You would, right? Mm -hmm. The easiest way is Jesus Christ. The whole point is when you come to Jesus Christ, all the protection you ever need is there. Because He protects our in eternal life. Not the things of the world. He protects what is important to us and that is a life with Him. And we need to come to the understanding that nothing material will ever be worth the price of Jesus Christ. That nothing material can stand for eternal life. We need to be disciplined. We need to be disciplined in our lives. And I've got points here. We need to have a disciplined life. One that includes self-discipline. Because if we've got no self-discipline like being able to pick up the Bible and read. We're not going to move forward. We need self-drive. The motivation to do what we need to do in Jesus Christ. We need vision. And I'm not talking about eyesight. To see the bigger picture. Not like a bunch of chickens that walk around that only see this. Like an eagle, where you can fly and see a much bigger space. Because life isn't about this little point here. Eternal life is a very long time. And we need courage. <coughs> courage to do what is right. No matter what our friend next to us says. <coughs> no matter what the other person over there thinks. We need courage in our lives. Hallelujah. And most of all, all of this put together is self-discipline. 
Because if we have discipline and we've got Christ guiding us, everything else just falls into place. You can have the courage, you can have the drive, you can have the motivation, you can have everything else in your life that you need. With Christ, everything is possible. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Basically, tonight is about getting off our high horse and letting Christ lead the way. Letting our heads go back to the normal sides and letting Christ lead the way. Understanding that God's work in our life is going to keep us moving forward. And as long as we are disciplined through Christ, we are going to have growth. We are going to move. Amen. Amen. So yeah, like I say, I don't have much more to say. This is the word that Christ spoke to me over the last two days. It's something that I needed to hear as well. Because Christ, He speaks to me and that that can then hopefully move in somebody else's life as well. The way Christ speaks, it's actually an amazing thing. What Pastor had to say today, while he hosted, and what I've got to say, is along the same lines, and we never said anything. It's what God, God has spoken through us and what He needed to be said. All we need to do is open our eyes. We need to trust in Him and open our spiritual ears. God in our lives, if we allow Him to work, it's one of the most amazing things. It's indescribable when He starts working. It's... I can't even think of a word for it. When you let Him lead... And you stand back and your spiritual eyes are opened. You see how everything just flows. And what he needs done is done. <coughs> so as the night progresses, ask God to work in your life. Ask God to keep working in your life. And if you need to be drawn closer to Christ, Ask Him to draw you, He'll will. I know it's very difficult at times to pick up your Bible. <coughs> also, I played a song the other day and it said, the new prison of life is a scream. Because we're always stuck like this. Everything comes through a screen. Even our scriptures come through screens. So what is a new jail? TV, phone, whatever we sit in and we don't actually notice what God is doing in our lives. <coughs> so with that said, let's trust in the Lord tonight. And I hope and I pray that he has spoken to somebody like he has spoken to me. Let's have the discipline in Christ to pick up the word. Let's have the discipline and the self-discipline in our lives to ask Christ for the help that we need. Because he will give it to us. Let's ask Christ tonight to motivate us in such a way that we don't have that self-image of perfection. That we understand that He is perfect and we are perfectly imperfect through Him. Amen. Amen. Let's just bow our heads. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for tonight.